a future city is always a reflection of um, today or the present. So I see a city of adaptable spaces, a city with a material economy that will look quite different from what we know today. We really don't know what the future holds. We don't know what the technologies that will exist in 20 years, certainly 20, 30 years ago, we probably would have had a completely different view of what we would have had today. What I like as a technologist is that unknown. Maybe we'll find out some new solution to a technical problem and totally change the way we've thought about issues like climate change and, and energy consumption of the last 10 years. You know what I would really be interested in is actually go to a school and ask them to draw the, what future cities would look like to them. There are several challenges that come with future cities. Urbanization, you have high density. But in my opinion, if we really want to address the issue of other uh, future cities, one of the most important things we have to discuss about the social and economic disparity. And I think to look for ways that can somewhat balance the two, that's uh, one of the big issues out there. I am also skeptical about its uh, usefulness as an analytic tool. In most cases, density means to extrude, to oust, or to repress certain strata of the population. It is a um, part of segregation rather of, than of synthesis. So uh, also that term I would uh, look at as a kind of propaganda term and uh, opt for a more skeptical and theoretically based use of it. A lot of people outside of the fields of planning, architecture and urbanism don't really use the term density other than we're talking about the, the weight or hardness of a rock, for instance. Density has a big advantage and density can be a very fascinating and exciting uh, point to design cities today. Um, what is the best way of put traffic lights or maybe design a, a bridge or something that solves in the micro scale that problem? Um, you know, Space is still space, it's still three-dimensional. We can go beyond it to extremely sophisticated, you know, online networks. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, we still have this, a lot of physical um, kind of needs and uh, they're very necess necessary. But these days, that term is, is simply inadequate. And there are many very important discussions around the question of scale now, which reach beyond, uh, in a way, the human-centric idea of scale that, that, that architects traded in for, for so many, many years. I think it's important to think always across those scales. You cannot think of a material without thinking a city. And we should also not think the city without understanding the material to build it with. The real smart city is actually a responsive city. And the responsiveness comes from sensors, yes, but even more importantly from the people who are living there, because they know best what they want. So therefore I see a hierarchy from smart buildings to smart cities to responsive cities. And the core of all or connecting all of these scales and names are the people. These cities don't only, do not only look at one particular aspect, but that they manage to connect these different elements because only that will, would make a city truly smart. So therefore in the smart city context, Data quality is extremely important, especially for researchers. Everyone realizes that this information is going to change the way we live our lives and the way that we organize cities. At the moment, I think we're just beginning to scratch the surface of what is possible. It's very interesting to get a lot more into this big data topic, as well to be more aware of how many data even me and my family and my friends are producing every day. For me, Big data is a wonderful new field which we have to explore. So being on an equal high eye level, it's important that the systems we're working with are talking to us and answering questions to us. So the term of resilience puts that into place. It is a response to certain factors that we might control or not. It would be more and more about space, especially because of the fragmentation that's happening in the contemporary city space. It can only ever be something projected. We can never say something is sustainable unless 
we are giving it some time to prove the giving the project time so it can prove that it is truly sustainable.